I'm not also not an interviewer. I'm oh. just a guitar player. So it's uh, it's a little bit more casual, I would okay. say. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, they said they told, they, they told me about it, and I was like, oh, cool. Finally, get to talk about something I can relate to, as opposed to right. being drilled all these crazy questions. <laughs> right, but we're still going to talk about the album and all that. Okay. So I, I, I'll start by clapping. Okay. Just that's for sync, and that's okay. Then we're done. All right. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Ola. Today, it's my big pleasure to have Slash Hi. in here and in my chair. Dude, it's such an honor to have here really? in my in this room. <laughs> you know, there's been a lot of guests sitting in that chair, but uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm honored to be here, and it's very cool. Yeah, yeah. thank you so I'm, much. I'm digging it. So you're like fast in and out. Uh, yeah. Just they're making you work. I just finished the European tour, and yep. we finished in Paris, and I did a day of this in Paris. Flew over here, do a day of it here, and then I'm gonna fly back to after tomorrow back to LA. All right, all right. So yeah. your new album, yeah. uh, Orgy of the Damned, yeah. is about to come out very soon. I've listened to it. Yeah. Uh, the name. Well, Orgy what does it mean? Be, um, <laughs> when when you if you think about it, people always just say, "Oh, blues music is devil's music, and yep. it's it's taboo, and you know all that yep. kind of stuff." So I said, if you get a bunch of people together to collaborate on a bunch of this devil's music, Orgy of the Damned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah so you got all these incredible musicians uh, yeah. singing and performing on your album. When you planned ahead of this, were, were you like? dead set on who was going to do what or yeah i mean i i picked the song that we we're going to do and then i would think about who i would want to have okay. sing it and and i picked somebody and that was the person i would go after and fortunately everybody came through it was actually you know sort of a blessing because you never know what's going to happen and uh, schedules and yeah. all that exactly well, yeah i mean it took a week to record the record and some of the oh. vocals all in that week but then the rest of the vocals took the better part of two months okay to get it all done okay well it's very cool killing floors out yeah. uh incredible and uh with uh, brian johnson on vocals and also yeah. steven tyler yeah. on uh, the harp and it's wow oh. sounds great yeah it's, cool. it's really cool and just hearing like brian johnson and you know after everything he's been through and it's just really cool to see him yeah in there he was really excited about that song and it was funny because, you know, for me, I go, I want to do Killing Floor. Brian Johnson, where did that idea come from? Right. You know, like, but it just came to me. And so when I called him, he was, oh, yeah, man, I, you know, I grew up listening to Howlin' Wolf and singing these songs. So he was really into it. And so I said, okay, cool, you know, then let's do it. And I flew out to uh, Florida and we just spent an afternoon in the studio together. And he was just had a blast singing that song. It was yeah. great. It was fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the. Uh, I saw some clips There's of it, clip like of it. little clips from uh, like back behind the stage. He seemed to be yeah. really in really it and enjoying it, it and uh, how he was like trying to keep the voice lower. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was just really cool. Yeah. And, and then and then right after, not too long after that, we did Power Trip with ACDC and right. he was doing his thing. He yeah. <laughs> Still got it, yeah. you know. And uh, Steven Tyler just uh, yeah. coming in and just came in. It's, I, I told, I mentioned to him on the phone that I was doing Killing Floor and putting some harp on it, and he offered to do it. And I was like, Yeah. And he came down that day, you okay. Know, and and came in, and it took him maybe ten minutes to do the harp part, but we ended up oh. hanging out all day. Oh, know? okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So uh, you also have uh, like Iggy Pop and uh, Billy Gibbons mm -hmm. and. Uh, so many cool legends. Yeah, Paul like, Rogers is on there. Yeah. Exactly, and I even saw the clip where like Billy Gibbons is in there. He plays. I thought it was funny because he's doing a solo on your guitar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I thought it was really cool. Well, Just that really is pretty. funny. Yeah, that is the guitar that he used, and it was a great. Yeah, like he came in and did that, and it was one of the the best vocals. Yeah. Being, it was like, I, I can't imagine anybody else singing that song now. Yeah. yeah. And the guitar solo was cool. The guitar solo is one of those simple things that he did, yeah. and I actually had to sit down and learn it because it had some cool little oh, things yeah. to it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're know. performing the solos now, or how's that going to work? Well, I mean, I'll do the solos in, yeah. the, in the live thing, but um, it'll be, and, and Tash is in the band. He's the other guy right. that's playing guitar. So. Yeah. So he does the vocals then? Or? He does He does vocals, and Ted Yandriatis, who's the keyboard player, um, organist guy, okay. he, he sings as well. And originally, that's who was going to sing the record. Okay. And that's who will do it live. But I had this idea once we started pre-production. I was like, 
I'm gonna get a bunch of different singers just to make it more interesting because otherwise I think everybody would think that I'm doing a real blues record where it's like right. one of these serious blues albums because you know how many guys that do that. Yeah. And I didn't want it to be taken as that and I thought, man, you know, it'd be a really good idea just to have all these different people sing it and make it a little bit more eclectic. Yeah, right. Just a, well, it sounds like it's, uh, it's, it's more like a... I wouldn't say a tribute album, but it seems like it's more of a you know, like a tribute to your it is for like your albums from it, the past. Like. Yeah, no, that's exactly. Yeah, you, I couldn't have put it better myself. It's just a bunch of songs that I grew up listening to that had an influence and an impact on me, and and um, and that's all it is is my interpretation of those songs the way I, you know, just for the fun of it. Right. You know, wow. so I didn't want it to be taken to too serious <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> going into like nerdier questions about guitars and gear and all mm -hmm. that obviously you know gibson guitars and uh the les paul i would imagine that you have a lot of guitars yeah, and uh reason. but is there like a go-to guitar that you're like this is the one i start writing on for me it's very i'm very interested in how people start writing music or like yeah. what different guitars uh comes out of different guitars yeah no it's a good a good a good point um for this kind of thing, this, the go-to record that I always record with, and I mean, not go-to oh, record, yep. go-to guitar, that I always record with, I didn't use on this record, oh, okay. which is this, this handmade Derrick right. uh, replica. Um, I had uh, some, I just pulled out a bunch of vintage guitars and a bunch of vintage uh, combo amps. Okay. And ended up using a 63 335 okay. for a lot of the record and then I had a couple different Les Pauls and, and believe it or not, a Strat and a Tele. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, nice. So that was, that was basically it. They're all basically older guitars and then I had a, 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 a bunch of different combos, Fenders and Marshalls mm -hmm. and Vox and this and that but I had a, a magnetone combo that yeah. Billy Gibbons gave me years ago and I would never heard it before so I just brought it down there and I would set up in the morning your you know afternoon whatever and uh, and and listen to each one with a particular guitar trying to figure out what I was going to use for that song right and I invariably would go back to the magnetone I used it for the whole pre-production okay. and the whole record Okay. So it's just it's really simple setup. You know? do, do you still like enjoy tinkering around with settings and? Uh... I've never have enjoyed that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I have always been able to I, I, you know to, as quickly as possible set up something that sounds good. Yeah. And then just leave it. And right. So I'm not I've never been fascinated in in electronics mm -hmm. or in like you know some some effects are interesting and yep. whatnot, but uh, I I don't enjoy enjoy messing with with knobs and all that so I like plug in straight into your amplifier yeah. and just let it rip <laughs> yeah. basically yeah, yeah. If, if i may ask mm -hmm. uh, about uh, velvet revolver uh is there gonna ha anything happen with that because i heard something that and even though you know you need to find there needs to be a singer oh. but it's not necessarily like it's on hold a little bit well no so velvet revolver when when scott mm. was uh ousted from that mm -hmm. um, we toyed with the idea of maybe getting a replacement singer and continuing yeah. on so so Matt and Duff um, really in earnest auditioned a, a few different people and we wrote a bunch of songs but I think as soon as it ended with Scott it ended with me yeah okay. because I, I the, the Velvet was a really hard band yeah we went through a lot in that band and Scott was very difficult and yeah. I just couldn't see anybody coming in necessarily to replace him but I did go through the process a little yeah. bit and then it, nothing came out of it and so I just sort of moved on that kind of just so there's, there's yeah. no uh, interest in bringing it back okay. at this point so your main focus is just gonna do your own yeah slash yeah well more. you know I'm back in Guns N' Roses yeah. so I want to get a new Guns record done yeah I've got the Conspirators which I just right. finished a tour with and so I'm gonna start a new record with them after the tour for and with Miles record. them yeah okay so yeah. I'm pretty busy <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. so uh, how did you like uh, what what did you what did you do when the pandemic happened I um, I got pretty prolific <laughs> okay <laughs> I mean because you know like I was like fuck all right so I worked on on demos for the the last conspirators record that okay. we put out actually during COVID. Okay. We were just talking about that how we all we we're in the studio in Nashville and everybody got sick. Oh wow! Um, so it's it, it is a genuine COVID record. Oh wow! Um, anyway, so there was that. I did some little sessions, uh, you know, uh, guitar things. I did some stuff with Tom Morello. Mm -hmm. I did some other interesting sort of recordings, and then. 
um, I produced uh, a horror movie called The Breach. That's right. Which came out, and I did the scoring for that. Yeah. So I, I had a lot going on all through throughout the pandemic, and also finished up some of the Axel songs that he had left over from the last. Chinese Democracy record that we wanted to revamp, so yeah. I did some recording for that stuff as well. All right. So uh, I think I heard somewhere else that you're a big fan of horror music yeah. in general. Like, yeah. what, what's your favorite? Um, well, we, we opened the set before, you know, our introduction is, is uh, Ennio Marconi's The Thing. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the scoring guys, I mean, you know, a lot of the great ones, they're not necessarily horror guys. They're just really great composers. Yeah. But there's some great movies, you know, like some of the old stuff from the 50s. The Creature was a great one. Yeah. The Fly was great. Um, uh, the, uh, it's not really a horror movie, but it's sort of um, slightly thriller kind of thing. But I thought it was great it was the soundtrack for the latest Joker movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was really, really good. And. Um, you know, there's a bunch of them. A lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, um, what's his face, uh, Randy? What the fuck? What's it? You know, the, Elfman, Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman, okay. exactly. Yeah, I mean, he's he's uh, really original and, and great. So yeah. I listen to sometimes drive around in my car and just listen to soundtracks all day. All right. Do you let that inspire you then? <laughs> it, I would say it's inspiring, but it's not. It, it, very rarely is it inspiring in terms of writing something for a band. Okay. But it's great when you're working in this because composing for like i'm doing music for a show right now mm -hmm. and it's a whole different part of your brain that's working right. than when you're writing for a band mm -hmm. and it's interesting i think one of the reasons i love it is because i never tap into that if i'm thinking about right. a band but you know sometimes if you can make one go to the other side it can be really interesting what type of show is this it's a, a thriller called it's a crime thriller called uh the crow girl oh, okay. it's actually a, a swedish book Oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, I'm not sure exactly what year it came out. It's not too long ago. But it's a really great, uh, very dark okay. crime thriller. And so I got a hold of it, and I ended up selling it to Buccaneer, who's okay. producing it now. So right. they made it from Swedish backdrop to British. Okay, okay. But it's the same story. Okay, so how does that differ then in terms of making the music? Is it longer songs or is it shorter segments? Or it's it, it, Yeah, it's interesting. Do you write towards the script? You, or? you write you yeah. based off the, the feel of the script yeah. and, and if I'm looking at dailies and whatever that vibe is. Yeah. And it's very pronounced, like you, your mind will go in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I basically what I do is I just write a real good section of a theme music for whatever the scene is right. and maybe the parts within it. And then I give it to a scoring composer who's actually working okay. on the thing so he can integrate it in there. Right, you know? right. So uh, going back a little bit, I wanted to ask you a thing about the Guitar Gear again, mm -hmm. uh, because that's mainly my channel is about Guitar Gear. Yeah. And uh, how are you I probably seem pretty dull to you. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. But I had a question like, have you tried any of the newer, I mean, we're in a very weird era right now where yeah. there's a lot of new guitar technology happening. I know. And, uh, you know, amplifiers are getting a little bit uh, more less used, yeah. I would say, by the, by the current generation of younger guitar players that, that never played an amplifier. Yeah, yeah. They play plugins and, you know, frack the left, like Axe Effects. And, yeah. Like, uh, have you tapped into any of that? I, I have a little bit. Um, okay, so the fractal thing, I haven't had any reason to go there yet. But plugins, mm -hmm. I use all the time because um, in the studio, when you're doing stuff that doesn't necessarily have to be the Marshall sound no. or whatever, you can get really interesting sounds from plugins and do a lot of unique things. And I write music for this thing called Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood. Okay. And so when I'm doing that, sometimes I use a guitar synthesizer, I use plugins, anything but just your standard stock guitar sound. Right, okay. So I am familiar with that stuff. That said, um, I, I've been using you know that that magnetone amp, and I just designed a new amp with those guys, oh, a big hundred watt amp with them. Okay. And so it sounds really good. So I love working with an amplifier because there's something maybe it's old school, but there's something pure about the way the speakers react with Absolutely. the sound in the cabinet and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean that's where we are right now. Is yeah. that you can't replicate that in a plug-in, the no. movement of the air and all that. Right. And standing in a room, you can't. I mean, you can use like you know, this full range full response speakers, but it doesn't sound and move the same way. Yeah, that's true. So uh, there's always going to be the disconnect, but then again, a lot of the younger guys there, they never played a real amplifier. Yeah. I they mean, have no idea what yeah, a Marshall JCM exactly, sounds like. Yeah. 
And I mean, you know, in this, a, a funny thing about the amplifier is like live, um, so I'm using amps and all that, but then live I'm using also uh, in-ear monitors. Yes, okay. And that changes the whole thing, mm -hmm. and I can't stand them. Yeah. But I use them because there's, a, I mean, especially with singers and all that kind of stuff, it just, it works for everybody. It's very convenient. Right. So you're working with a sound that doesn't, isn't it necessarily real. No. And it's really hard for me, and playing wise, you're searching and searching. It's, yeah. Do you it's, feel that it's very harsh sounding? Like well, it's so I've, direct. I've, I've been tweaking them like crazy. Yeah. So I've been working with Jerry Harvey to make uh, make them so that they're a little bit more pleasing uh, tone wise to the right. ear. Because the first ones I heard, I said, how can anybody yeah. use these? It's awful. It is awful. <laughs> you know? And it's also a very terrible way of hearing yourself. Yeah. It doesn't give you confidence. It's, it's very direct. It's very yeah. brittle. And yeah. it's and you can mix and you can do all. I mean, I'm, and I'm doing it. Mm. But like I had a show the other night in Paris, just the other night. And and um, my ears went out. Oh. And so then I pulled them out, and I thought I'd listen to the house, but the what? house was too out front. Yeah, yeah. So I did an entire, this this happened during a song, it's called, what's it called, Wicked Stone, right? Mm -hmm. So there's an extended guitar solo. Yeah. So I'm at the front of the solo, and this happens, and I'm like, I can't stop. Yeah. So I played the whole rest of the song, not being able to hear and just uh, and, and hear any bands and this nothing. is yeah <laughs> just just going off my imagination of yeah. what it sounds like in my head so that's that was an in-air thing and i was like fuck i hate these things but they're a necessary evil anyway but the, the reason i brought it up is because you're talking about you know having how your amps work mm -hmm. and then you're using in-airs it's almost defeats the purpose yeah you know even though what the people are hearing out front is genuinely coming off of a microphone in front of cabinets. Yep. What you're playing to is something else entirely. So. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, what I was going to say is about the younger generation of guitar players um, and a lot of the bands, you know, new bands and stuff, are mostly using Pro Tools and a whole different yep. approach to recording anyway. Yeah. So it makes sense that that fractals would or, or plugins would just work. You know? But I, I think still that, you know, to some extent, the problem with this is that a lot of the new music sounds very similar because they're all starting to use the it's same very, technology. It's very linear. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's a little bit what happened to pop, you know, everything starts to, so uh, start, start yeah. to sound the same. And uh, with a real amplifier and, you know, a mic or a set of microphones, it, it still keeps it, um, a little bit more real sounding. Yeah, you and, know. and you can mess with it to make it a little bit more unique, even though it might be the same brand amp and the same brand guitar, yeah. you can change some stuff around. So in between songs uh, for this album, for instance, like, mm -hmm. do you take a new approach for every single song or do, does the, do the producer like, oh, let's try this and shove a microphone a little bit off or? You know, no, we just switch guitars. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, because there's a lot of tonal differences yep. on the record. And like I said, some of it was that 335, yep. right? Then I had a, a 59 um, Les Paul that sounds a certain way. And I have a 58 that sounds a certain way. And you can definitely tell the difference between the two. Um, and then I had a gold top, which is different than those. And then uh, you know, and then using a telly and a strat, that's a whole different trip. Yeah. So it was really switching guitars, not amps and not any kind of outboard stuff or okay. or, or or stuff in the console. Okay. Because I'm thinking like, okay, a telly and a strat, you still need to tweak a little bit. A little I mean, bit. otherwise well, it's gonna on, be on the amp, I mean all things considered, I really didn't mess with it much at all. The tel for the telly I did. Yeah. I did turn the bass up. Yeah. But you know, other than that, um, Pretty much everything just sort of stayed the same. All right. Oh, cool. Uh, so I have one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you listen to nowadays? Oh shit! All kinds of shit. Uh, I mean, okay. So, so um, I obviously have been listening to a lot of blues as of lately, but yep. mostly old blues. But there's a lot of great new stuff that's out there. I mean, Derek Trucks isn't isn't new yes. anymore, but still really brilliant yeah. um, there's a guy I always mention because he's really good named Chris Buck who who I'm friends with that's you know he puts stuff on Instagram and it's really awesome um, there's a lot of players all around so a lot of them I don't even know their names but they're fucking mind-blowing right you know oh, on Instagram. It, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 like social media has yeah. opened up a whole new world of players out there yeah. um, but as far as bands are concerned you know most mostly stuff that I've been listening to are older bands with new records you know yeah. he's, he's got, had a new record that was really good um queens of the stone age has got a new record love gojira is great oh, okay. new metallica is fucking amazing um you know so there's a lot of new stuff in that vein and, and then as far as new bands are concerned 
Um, you know, it's sort of. I think I think Dirty Honey was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that was a really good new you know rock band that sort of has that old school style that's right. actually pretty genuine. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I'm forgetting that's come across my thing but I'm any metal bands in particular other than Gojira? Um, not not new ones no, no. <laughs> not that I can think of. But old ones then? Yeah well the old ones still like, Gojira's one, Metallica's one um, and the, the last Megadeth record was right. cool um, I think that's about it for me at the moment. Okay so uh, next album is gonna be with the Conspirators? Next record yeah. with the Conspirators. Uh, do you have any more plans to do anything Similar to like this tribute album, or is that, do you feel like you can just leave it now? And well, it's, it, I, it hasn't even come out yet, yeah. so it's it's sort of I'm gonna tour on it, like I said, and it's a festival, so I'm playing with all these different blues artists for the festival, and yeah. it's sort of a new territory for me. But if it goes well, I'd like to do something like that every year. Mm -hmm. If I was gonna do another blues record, though, I would probably do something of original material, okay. or maybe half and half, or yes. something like that. Yeah. But I'm not even really thinking about it seriously at this point. Right. Do it's you too feel, far in advance. Do you feel uh, a little bit nervous to enter this new um, era a little bit? Well, I just know that, like, okay, so I was talking to Teddy and Tash yesterday, as, uh, about the, we have a I have a little small acoustic in store thing that's happening this month later this month, like putting the songs together. And I'm like, yeah, and it's gonna be on acoustic. Okay, so it's sort of like I'm a little little anxious about how that's <laughs> supposed to go, what songs we're gonna pick, but for the actual show, you know, we're talking two hours of doing mostly covers and putting yeah. together a set and then just flying by the seat of our pants. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, so it's gonna be fun. You know? Yeah. Wow, awesome. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much for coming here, yeah, sitting in my chair. Great time. Uh, would, I, would, I, would I normally be sitting there? No. Oh, okay. No, this is perfect. <laughs> it's perfect like it is. This is your chair. So yeah, this is my chair. Yeah, they're so both thank your you. chairs. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much for tuning and good luck later tonight. All right, cheers. All right, awesome. Thanks. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, I know. It was fun. <laughs>